Hi there everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at Chorus, which is one of Ableton's stock plugins and kind of a standard uh, effect that you hear on uh, all kinds of, of music and all kinds of um, sound effects and sound design. So uh, today we have this small track and I used Chorus on a few of these. Uh, actually, this track didn't really need Chorus um, on, on most of the things, but uh, I, I wanted to change the feeling from, from a very clean, kind of Moby-esque feeling to being a little more spacey and strange, and Chorus can do that effect really, really well. Um, it, it can kind of thicken things up. Uh, that's what the Chorus effect usually does. So let's take a look at what Chorus is and how it uh, sounds. First we'll listen to this bell thing with nothing on it. So it's a very beautiful sound. But now let's add the chorus and see how it changes the sound. So you can hear it kind of takes away some of the clarity. It thickens the sound up. And in this case, because the bell is a very kind of reverberant sound, it makes it sound very spacey and kind of sci-fi-esque. So let's take a look at how chorus works and what we can do with it. So we'll start with a fresh copy of Chorus right here. And uh, you'll see that Chorus is comprised of two delays, two separate delays. The first one here uh, has a slider, and it goes from 0 0.01 milliseconds all the way up to 20.0 milliseconds. And this just sets the, the delay time. Uh, above this, we've got a high-pass filter. So it goes from 20 hertz to 15K. Um, so you can set, you can cut out some of the, the lower bass frequencies if you'd like. Then over here we've got delay number two. Similarly, it has this slider. Uh, so you can set different delay times for both of these, or if you'd like, you can click this uh, equal sign here to make sure that they're always the same. Uh, the Another difference here for number two, number two does not have a high pass filter and instead it has these three buttons. Uh, it can switch through these three modes. The first quote unquote mode is off which means that delay 2 is not in play only delay 1 uh, is working here. Next we can go to fix mode. Fix mode only um, it means that only delay 1's uh, time gets modulated and you can see over here the modulation section that we'll talk about in a second but fix kind of means that uh, delay 2 is not going to be affected. Whereas with mod, well, then with mod, it means that delay 1 and 2 will receive the same modulation. All right, uh, so let's stick with mod. We'll keep everything nice and equal, set our high pass around 500. And then we come over here to the modulation section. And the modulation section just add some movement to your chorus. So uh, you can see in the help box it says this imparts motion to the chorus sound. Click and drag vertically to change the amount of modulation. Click and drag horizontally to change the modulation rate. We'll take a listen at how this sounds in a second. Next we have the polarity settings. We can either do plus or minus polarity. So uh, our positive or negative is more appropriate. So this, uh, you can't really hear the change uh, when you switch the polarity until you bump up the next parameter, the feedback, and also when you have kind of a, uh, a short delay time. And we'll listen to how that sounds as well. But the feedback uh, determines how much of the output signal gets fed back into the input. And this can create some really crazy sounds. And then finally, we've got the dry wet parameter, just like in every Ableton effect. But with chorus, I mean, if you just want to add a little chorus, you can stay in the low values. Or if you want to use it on uh, an auxiliary track or a return, you can turn it up to 100%. But I think in most cases, you're probably going to just want to keep it around 50%. All right, but anyway, let's play around with this. And keeping in mind everything we just talked about, we'll listen and see how the sound changes. All right.
So you can create some really uh, freaky effects. Obviously not appropriate for the song that I'm using to demonstrate this, um, but you can create some really strange things. But if you're sitting there and thinking, well, that's not quite strange enough for me, you may have noticed that there's one more parameter that we didn't go over here, this times 20 button, and this multiplies your LFO uh, by 20. So it really goes nuts. Uh, let's turn it on and hear what it sounds like. So obviously, some pretty strange stuff. All right. Um, but anyway, that's about it for chorus. You can create some really nice effects. I've used it in this song, as we've already heard on the bells. Also, uh, over here on the piano, I wanted to get kind of a CP70, or, or is it CP70, CP80? That old, nice uh, 80s kind of electric piano sound. Let's hear what it sounds like without. Not really that close to the sound I was going for, but it does create a kind of nice vintage type sound, which is what I wanted to add into this. You can also add it uh, to instruments like the bass, for example. The bass is really good for thickening it up. So without, and with, so you can hear how that sound thickens up. All right, well anyway, that's gonna be uh, everything for this uh, tutorial, but next time we're going to be taking a look over here at Compressor, and Compressor, uh, of course, is one of the most essential, the kind of uh, meat and potatoes plugins that comes with Ableton, so we'll get in depth with that. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time.